Hey guys, what's going on? Tool Cruise here, and in today's video, we're gonna be doing a review of our new cycling computer. This is the Trim One Lite, and we've been getting a lot of questions on the channel on some of our recent videos asking, what is that bike computer that Tuin's using on her bike? So here it is, we're gonna be giving our full review. We've been testing out this bike computer for the last few months, and it's been doing a great job. So this is the Trim One Lite, and you can see this is a really thin bike computer, uh, completely different than the Garmin's or Wahoo's that we've used before, which are a little bit thicker. And this also has a really nice big screen. I think this is about a 3.2 inch screen. It's also got an automatic backlight feature and the screen is in black and white, really clear and easy to see. So that's one of the first things I really like about it. Uh, it's got this nice sleek design and yeah, just really easy to see all the different data points. They have an easy customization menu on the smartphone so you can change all these data points to what you want them to be. So this is what we have for Tuanchan's. She's got the speed in the front and we've got her heart rate and cadence. So we're trying to uh, work on her different heart rate zones for training and improving her cadence right now. So that's the computer we have here for Tuan's bike. And I've also got the same computer on my bike right here. So it just twists on and off. It's the same system that they have with the Garmin. And you'll notice my screen is a little bit different. So I've got my three second power up at the top and I've also got my heart rate and I've got my speed here. I've moved my cadence down here. And you can flip through the different screens here. So our second screen, we've got our mountain ascent. We haven't done any climbing yet today. And we've also got our map screen here and then our lap screen. So you can customize different screens if you want. It's really easy to do in the smartphone app. We've got three buttons on here and you can see the icon here. So this one turns it off. This one will start the ride. Really easy to use. And then we have our basic information up at the top, the time of the day and the charge and what devices you're connected to. Do you have the GPS signal? So apart from the sleek design and lightweight, I think this is only like 60 grams. It's extremely lightweight, like light as an egg. Uh, the other thing I really like about this computer is the extremely long battery life. So alone, if you just use this computer by itself, it'll get about 15 hours of battery life, which is pretty good. But if you connect it with the speed sensor, you'll notice we've got this speed sensor here on the front wheel. This will make the battery life go up to 50 hours. Uh, just because it's not relying on the GPS for getting the speed data. And this part here is actually solar powered, so you don't have to worry about getting a new battery for this piece. So just adding this piece alone, you have a 50 hour battery life for the bike computer, which is ridiculous. And to top that off even more, to make it more ridiculous, you notice this strange little device here. This is actually a solar panel. In this cable we'll fold out here, this is actually a magnetic charger. So it'll plug right into the bike computer and that way we have an endless supply of power to our bike computer. So if you're doing bike touring, you basically don't need to worry about your battery dying on your bike computer, um, as long as you got some sunny weather. So uh, we've been using this computer for almost a full month without any charges. It's been ridiculous, the battery life that we've gotten on this so far. So next, let's take a look at the smartphone app that you use to pair to the computer itself. This is really easy to use. It connects automatically by Bluetooth, and there's a bunch of different features in here. So first on the homepage, we can see our history and our data. So uh, we've only been doing a few rides this last week. We're on a rest week right now, and we can see all of our ride data here. So if you wanna redo a route that you've done before, you can just click on one of these and reload that route. Uh, make sure you go follow Tunchan on Strava. You can give her some kudos. She's been doing some awesome training recently. The other cool page here is the ride page. So you can use this, you can import a GPX file. So we did that once here on her phone. We usually do it on my phone, um, but the really cool feature is if you wanna go somewhere new. So this page is really cool because you can route exactly to where you wanna go. So for example, we wanna start our ride here and we wanna make our way down here. Maybe we'll turn here so we can add a waypoint. It'll automatically add a turn for that section. And let's say uh, <laughs> we wanna go here next. So we'll make this our destination. Really easy to make a full route, and it also has an automatic rerouting feature. So if you get lost on your ride, it'll automatically reroute you into the right direction. So really cool feature. And the last important feature here is the extra data control. So we've got some cool things here, um, especially the data pages here. So you can control exactly what data points are showing up on your computer and on what screen. So we've got our climbing screen, we've got our map screen, we've got our lap screen. You can add more if you want, and if you want to customize them more, you can do that. Another cool feature is it has an offline map cache. So if you don't have any data on your phone, you can download the local map and you don't have to worry about not having access to the maps. 
And it also does have Strava Live segments now, if that's something you like to do on your ride. All right, that's enough introduction. We're gonna continue this review out on the road. Let's go. All right, here we are starting our ride. Riding along the busy streets here in Chiang Mai, Thailand. And this is what the handlebar setup looks like. I'll try and angle this lower right now so you can see the full handlebar setup. And yeah, busy traffic area here. So not going to be looking at the computer screen too much right now. So we're starting our ride here in the downtown area of Chiang Mai. We're going to be riding out to the more uh, countryside quiet areas. I think we're going to be doing a two, two or three hour ride today. So we'll be testing this along the way. But yeah, going on to overall impressions of this bike computer. We've been using this bike computer for most of this year so far, so over two months now. And it's been performing like a champ. It's really easy to use and it's been really exciting for Tunchan to have her own bike computer. And she's really excited. After we finish every ride, she connects her phone, uploads her route to Strava. And yeah, she's been having a lot of fun using this bike computer. Oh man, that car about to run that guy over. You gotta be extra careful when you're riding in the city like this. You don't wanna spend too much time looking at your computer. You should only do that when you're riding in a more safe area when there's not too much traffic around you. So we're gonna be riding in the city traffic for a few more minutes. So I'll check back in a little bit later on the ride. We'll see how the computer's doing. All right, here we go. This is a lot better. Check out these beautiful country roads. So this is where we're gonna be continuing our ride. And just a quick check-in, we've actually been riding for uh, quite a little bit. We've been riding about 34 kilometers and about an hour and a half of ride time. And you can see my computer is still at 100%, which is pretty awesome. All thanks to this solar charger and to the front speed sensor. So let's take a look at Toon's bike. And on Toon's computer, she's only using the front sensor. She doesn't have the solar attachment right now. So she's gone down to 97%, so about 3% over an hour and a half of use. Well, that's ride time. We've, we've been out here a little bit longer like filming, so the computer's been on over two hours, I'm sure. Oh, hers actually shows the temperature. So you can see it is ridiculously hot outside right now. Do you, li do you like the hot weather, Tung? No, it's okay. No. Don't give me this. Uh... It was 42 before? Yes. Oh, that's in the direct sunlight. So hot. So hot. <laughs> no. I was about to think it's a little bit cooler because we're in the shade right now. Um, so anyway, we're going to continue on with our ride, giving our impressions on these bike computers. Let's go ahead and continue. Let's go. Let's go. Also, for the rest of our ride, I've loaded a route using the phone app really easy, just click and point exactly where you wanna go. And the really cool thing about this is it has this corner here, which has the arrows telling you which direction you need to go and how far the next turn point is. So we just need to keep going straight on this road for right now. Okay, back on the road. And beautiful country roads here. So when you're living in Chiang Mai and cycling here, the center of the city is pretty busy actually. There's a large amount of car traffic and the roads can be pretty nasty, pretty congested. But the really nice thing about living here is there's a lot of roads like this right off of the main roads. You don't have to go very far from the center of the city and you can get to this nice paradise. No cars, nice rolling hills, winding turns, and nice shady course. So that's the other nice thing about this computer is just with the large screen, you have all the information that you want and it's just really simple design. You can focus on your ride. You can just focus on your ride without having to like stare, dig through your computer. And yeah, just look down quickly. I can see all the information, exactly what I wanna see. As for the price of this computer, I believe this model is just under $200. They have two different versions of this computer. One is the regular one and one is the light. I think the regular one, it's a little bit more expensive. It's made from metal slightly heavier uh, they have some different colors um, but this one it's a little bit lighter it's made from plastic still plenty durable and yeah a bit cheaper so you can get a nice decent gps computer for under 200 bucks it's a pretty solid deal and yeah i haven't felt like anything is really lacking with this computer it does have some more advanced features like 
it can connect to all of your Bluetooth and Plus devices. So I've got my power meter connected. Uh, we both have our heart rate monitors connected. Tuing has a cadence sensor connected. So we've connected a whole bunch of devices, no problems. Uh, of course, it's gonna connect to your phone as well. So depending on the person, uh, this could be a limitation or just could be normal is uh, this computer, it does rely on your cell phone a lot. So especially for like the, the navigation and stuff, you wanna make sure your phone is connected, especially when you finish and save the ride. Um, it uses the phone for a lot of the processing power. So uh, for most people nowadays, you, you bring your phone on every ride. So it's not a big deal. So I think that's not an issue for most people. And yeah, a lot of the advanced controls are gonna be on the phone. So if you wanna route somewhere, you're not gonna be able to do that with the computer itself. You need to use your phone and plug in exactly where you wanna go. So I think that's pretty standard with a lot of devices now though. It does have some other advanced features like Strava live segments. So I really like using those when I'm doing my like KOM hunting or uh, training, just wanting to track how fast I'm going. So it's nice to be able to have that live information on here. I don't think they have a full custom screen for it though. I think it's more of like a pop-up kind of window and you can't really control it. But again, Trim is still a fairly new uh, company in the bike computer industry. So for this being like their first entry point into the market, I'm pretty excited to see like future versions of their computers as they make improvements, as they take in rider suggestions. So that's another good thing. Uh, I don't think I mentioned yet, they're based out of Korea. So a Korean based cycling computer company and they're pretty active with their app updates and stuff. So I've already sent some feedback. We've been using these computers for a couple months and uh, they've taken some of my feedback already and made some upgrades on the app. So that's great to see that they're active with that stuff and they're trying to actively make the software. And so I guess we made the wrong turn. We're gonna reroute based on our current location. So that's a pretty cool feature. If you take a wrong turn, or there's some construction that forces you to go a different way, it gives you the option to reroute right away. Just pops the message on the screen and you can continue without having to worry where you need to go. The thing I like the most about that is it has the arrows in directions on the main screen. So when I use a different computer, like my Wahoo, for example, I have to be on the map screen, which sometimes I wanna see some other data while I'm trying to figure out which direction to go. So. I like being able to look at my main data screen and see exactly what my next turn step is. So that's the advantage of having the nice big screen is you have that extra real estate so I can clearly see my next turn and see all my stats without having to change the screen. We're going up, I believe this is one of our last climbs of the day. So we can check here. Yeah, here we've got the climbing profile page. So we've just got a little kicker here then a nice downhill. Only 400 meters of climbing today, not so bad. So that's cool, yeah, we can even see the directions on the, the climbing page with the elevation profile. And it also just gave me a voice notification, so that's pretty cool. That actually came from my phone, so not from the bike computer itself. But I can hear it from my back pocket. Keep left. Yeah, we get the text notification on the bike computer as well. That's really cool. Downhill time. We got a sharp left here. That's showing on my screen, which is nice. No surprises. Yeah, I also like how it beeps at you when there's an important notification. So this is a pretty tough road. This is actually, it's kind of like a gravel road in some sections, pretty bumpy. Oh man, Tuing is just bombing it through here. I think Tuing's gonna be like a gravel specialist. We're gonna have to get her a gravel bike, geez. She might not even need one. All right, we're back on some nice smooth pavement. Oh, we can hear the cicadas off in the distance. Those weren't here a few weeks ago. Definitely a sign that summer is here. So our next turn, 1.4 kilometers, we're turning right. The other thing I wanted to mention with this computer is uh, how it connects to Strava. So I think a lot of people who use these kinds of GPS computers will be connecting to Strava. So 
we upload all of our rides publicly to Strava and it's pretty easy to do. So I have mine on automatic uploads. So I've just connected my Strava account to my trim account. So whenever I finish my ride, I connect my phone, it'll automatically upload to Strava. Uh, Tuing does hers manually. So she just clicks on the activity and her history page and she can click upload to Strava. So you can do either way, whichever is easier for you. Um, but there is one sort of issue I've had with this that I wanted to mention, and that is with the elevation profiles. So you'll notice sometimes on our rides on Strava, when Tuing is riding with this computer, and I've been riding with another computer like my Wahoo, our elevation profiles have been different. And the reason for that is just because of the way that this computer processes the data, it isn't the exact same way that it processes the data on Strava. So uh, whenever you take like a break or stop, it resets the elevation point. And the elevation will be accurate in this computer itself, but just because of the way the data is recorded and the way that Strava operates, it sort of adds an extra amount of decent climbing on your ride. So uh, when we've done similar rides, like I'd climb like 800 meters, but on Tung's account on Strava, it would show that she climbed like 900 meters or 950 meters. So sometimes a hundred meters more. Um, I mentioned this issue to Trim, so I hope they're gonna get this fixed in a software update in the future uh, or try and communicate better with Strava. So right now when we upload our rides to Strava, the elevation uh, profile isn't 100% accurate, but when you check it on the computer itself within the Trim ecosystem, it is accurate. So uh, that's just something to be aware of right now and hopefully an issue that should be easily resolved by them. And with the amount of software updates they're doing, I think they should be getting on that pretty quickly. But other than that though, I don't have any complaints about this computer. I really like it. Uh, we get a lot of comments on it actually. So whenever we go to like a bike shop or a ride, people look over at our bikes and be like, what's that? Because they've never seen one that looks like it. Turn right. Oh, that's awesome. It gives you the name of the road. So it says turn right onto 1269. That's this highway name. That's really cool. All right, we're in the final highway stretch of our ride. We take this one back to the canal road, back home. I think we're gonna stop up here at the convenience store, get some nice cold drinks. So let's check back in over there. 7-Eleven time. Here we go. This is our set combo. Yeah. Some water, yeah. some chocolate, some Snickers. And this is like a green tea lemon soda. Honey lemon. Yeah, it's actually pretty good. Nice and refreshing during a hot ride. So we're gonna wrap up this video here and we're gonna enjoy our little snack break here at the convenience store. But we wanna say a special thank you to Trim for sponsoring today's video. Um, we've had an awesome time testing out the Trim One Lite over the last few months. And we're gonna continue using these bike computers on our bikes moving forward. It's also pretty amazing that we've done a two hour ride. This computer has been on for over two hours and the battery life is still 100%. That's pretty ridiculous to see. So pretty awesome battery life on this computer. So if you're interested in getting one of these for yourself, go check them out. We'll leave the links down below so you can go check them out. And we also wanna say a special thank you to all of our awesome supporters over on Patreon. Thanks to your guys' support. We're able to continue filming cycling videos here over in Thailand and pretty soon we'll be heading over to Vietnam. We'll be making an announcement about that pretty soon on the channel, so lots of exciting things coming up. That's it for today's video though. We'll see you next time here on Tubal Cruise. Bye-bye.